Good morning, everyone. Thank you again for joining us for our time of prayer, worship, and the Word. Let me read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22. In Him, you are also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that you are building us. Lord, that you're causing us to grow. You're causing us to become strong. You're causing us to mature. But also, Lord, you're building us together with others for a place where you can dwell, for you desire to be with us, you desire to pour out your presence, to always be with us wherever we go, whatever we do. We thank you for your presence that always protects us, provides for us, and continues to transform us, Lord, every day of our lives. Even in the midst of the challenges we're facing today, your presence goes ahead of us. And we want to worship you even now, in Jesus' name. of the battle I put my trust in you When darkness overwhelms me I will look to you When enemies surround me and sorrow fill my heart Gentle voice reminds me we'll never be apart. Now I worship, now I declare, Jesus, you want it all. You reign forever. Fear is defeated. I know you are with me. Now I worship. Now I declare, Jesus, you want it all. You reign forever. Chose 
Thank you, Lord, for your presence that's here with us today. Lord, thank you, Lord, for the work that you're doing in our hearts. Continue to form the image of Jesus, your image, in our lives as we continue to walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're in Ephesians chapter 2, starting with verse 19. It says, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are, a fellow, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into the holy temple in the Lord. In him you are also being built together into a dwelling place by God, for God by the Spirit. About June 18 this year, while I was in Dubai for Every Nation Seminary, I met one of my first cousins for the first time in, in my life. I got to know about her about six months prior to my trip. Her, uh, her mother is my dad's sister. I've not met her mother yet, but because they reside in Saudi and because they also have a home in Dubai, she decided to meet up with me. It's very interesting that when we met for the first time, there was a, there, 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 there's a feeling of connection. There's an instant connection there, although we didn't know much of each other. It was amazing that the meetup with her husband was very warm. I was at ease and we felt like we knew each other for a long time. It was actually a, a great treat and a blessing finally meeting her and getting to know her. I realized that before we knew each other, before we met each other, our connection was already established, not by us, but by somebody else. Somebody's life joined us together. In Ephesians, we realize that one of the things God wants to do is to bring all peoples together. It, it is God's plan and His purpose to bring the different peoples of the world Together. In fact, this has been God's plan all along from the very beginning of time. He wants to make His dwelling in the midst of all people, in the midst of His people. But before our text, we see the condition of man. We see our condition. And what does the scripture say? We were separate from Christ in sin and wickedness. And it is sin that separates us from God. We were dead in our sin, and this was our own doing. We had no hope at all. Separated from God, separated from one another. No God, we were our own gods. We wanted, we've always wanted to make decisions on our own. We've always wanted, in a sense, to make our own rules, to do things our own way. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, says this, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. We have been brought near to God 
We have been brought near to each other. Why? Because God is doing something. God is building something. God is working out His purpose. He's setting up His best for His people. What did God do and what is God doing? Verse 19. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household. God made you. He, yeah, uh, God, uh, in a sense, joined you into His household. He made you for His household. You did not apply. We did not apply. In fact, most did not want to be part of God's household. Yet God in His love and His grace, He made us members of His household. He fulfilled all the, in a sense, the all the application process and requirements. Have you ever tried to apply in a club or, or organization? You have to go through a process, in a sense, to show them that you are deserving to be part of their group or organization. That you're worthy to be a member. What God did instead for us is that He qualified us. That is why the church is the only organization in the world that exists for people who are not part of it. That exists for people who probably don't want to be a part of it. Yes, we exist as God's family. And yet we must not forget those who are not yet part. And those who don't even want to be a part. Interestingly, in God's household, when you become a member in God's household, there's no probation period. The crucial step is that you receive the gift that God has given us. That you commit yourself to Christ. That you reach out to Christ. And then you become automatically a member of God's household. Verse 20. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple of the Lord. God is building us into something. God is building us in a certain way. He's building us in him and he's building us to him. God is calling us to himself. God is wanting to build a relationship with us. That is why he brought us near. Then he wants to build the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. That is why he gave us the word. The word of God shows us his will, his plan, and his promises for all. Then God eventually wants to bring us together so he can dwell in us. God desires his life and his word to be in us to shape us, to transform us, and eventually to empower us to be all that God has called us to be and created us to be. God is not making it difficult for us to get to Him. Instead, He paved the way so we could draw near to Him. He paved the way so He could be right in the middle of our lives. Lastly, verse 22 in Him you are also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. You notice God wants to join us to others. A personal relationship with Jesus does not remain only personal. Eventually, it is joined to others. Eventually, it will involve others. Built together, put together or constructed in a sense like a building out of several things being joined together so that several different things become one thing, become one whole. God has never meant any one of us to live life alone. God wants to join us to others and wants us and wants to use us to join others. God is joining us to others, the easy, the easy ones and the difficult ones, easy relationships and difficult relationships. I realize this, the best solution to our relational problems and challenges is to allow the work of God, the love of God, the will of God to build us together. God is bringing us together so He can dwell in our midst. The church is a blessing God gave 
so that we may all be blessed and therefore be a blessing to those that God is drawing near. Let us pray. Lord, I pray, Lord God, for every one of us, Lord, even through this, this difficult times, Lord, you brought us together. We've enjoyed your uh, our relationship with you. We've enjoyed a time of worship with you. We've enjoyed your presence. But Lord, we also ask, Lord, that even as you join us to you, Lord, that you would use us as well to join others to you and to join others to ourselves. Make us your church. Make us your dwelling place. Make us a place where your presence dwells, your presence that brings joy, your presence that transforms us, your presence that brings us together. Thank you, Lord God, for what you continue to build in our lives. Let us continue to worship God again. You reign forever, God. We declare your reign. Oh. When I was so lost, you chose to love someone. Lord for everything that you're doing in our lives and even as we look forward to the days ahead to the years ahead to your purpose being established in our life may we declare the truth of your word numbers chapter 6 the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace in Jesus name amen